today on the Linux Certification Virtual Summit, we have Jason Eckert, who is an experienced instructor and best-selling author in the information technology industry. With more than three decades of IT experience, over 20 certifications, six published apps, and 24 published textbooks covering certification-focused topics such as Unix, Linux, Windows Server, and Microsoft Exchange Server. Jason, thank you and welcome to the Linux Certification Virtual Summit. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Great. So let's just dive right in. Who is Jason Eckert, a.k.a. the Linux Guru? Okay, so I guess the Linux Guru comes from my bio illustration on my website. Uh, I asked an artist I know to, to draw her impression of me from what she knew, and there I am holding a Linux Guru mug. Uh, <laughs> but I've actually been, I've been a Unix user, programmer, sysadmin for all of my professional life. Uh, working for many different companies, uh, including Digital Equipment Corporation, Sun Microsystems, uh, even Microsoft. Um, and when Linux gained traction in the late 90s, uh, I naturally became a Linux user, programmer, and sysadmin as well, since Linux is really just open source Unix. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but for the last 18 years, I've been teaching computer science and information technology uh, in both the corporate and college worlds in Canada. And right now I'm the dean uh, for the technology faculties for nine campuses at Trask College in Canada. Oh, wow. That's that's extraordinary. Nine campuses. So let me ask you, how do you infuse Linux into uh, the technologies of the college that, you, that you're the dean at? Well, <laughs> we have... Uh, in, the, in the classes or otherwise? Just in general. Like, how do you... Um, Tell your faculty that Linux is a big aspect of the technologies that you want your students to learn. Just your oh, influence, yeah. We don't, we don't need to tell the <laughs> the faculty; <laughs> they already know. Uh, Linux is a is a big thing when it comes to the job market. Uh, as, well, all across North America, but especially in in Ontario, where you know most of our grads get jobs where most of their job may be working with like a Windows server supporting you know Windows Seven clients, but there's Linux servers that they have to support, so you wouldn't get that job unless you knew some Linux. Mm -hmm. There's other jobs, like uh, if you work for NavBlue or Google, where it's 100% Linux, and the only requirement to get hired is Linux certification, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Linux is pretty big. It's growing, of course. I mean, we see Linux more and more now. It's, it wasn't a, a household term 20 years ago, um, but now everyone's got an Android phone, and that's just Linux and drag. Yes. Um, and everyone runs Linux on embedded devices, and my fridge runs Linux. <laughs> Great. I'm not kidding. I can browse the web from my fridge. Wow. I guess it's supposed to, I guess, save you from, you know, sneaking food during the night. I'm not sure, but, <laughs> well, it uh, doesn't work. But Linux does on the, on the fridge. Perfect, perfect. I love the way you express that Linux is everywhere and that this world is ran through Linux. You know, I tell anyone that wants to Linux, listen, that Linux is the key. Like, you need to know Linux. Linux runs our phones. It's in servers at all the corporations. Like, it's it's big. And thank you for elaborating on that fact there. So, right. yeah. I see that you wrote a uh, CompTIA Linux Plus book. Uh, what inspired you to write that, that book and that study guide? Okay, so... Uh uh, my Linux Plus textbook for Cengage, uh, formerly Core Technology, it's in, in its fourth edition right now. The first edition I wrote um, back in 2001, 2002. And back then I was teaching a lot of Linux in the corporate training world. Um, because Linux was taking the corporate world by storm then. And uh, college textbook publishers were getting a lot of requests for Linux textbooks. The only problem was that there were virtually no Linux authors on the market. So they started asking around for what a good author was in the corporate world, and my name kind of came up and you know, from the corporate training I did, and I thought it was a good fit. Um, and I'm glad I did it because uh, it, was very, it was very natural for me because I basically spent my time teaching people who know nothing about Linux how to make Linux look easy and master it. So it was just a, kind of an extension of that. Perfect, perfect. And you said you're on your fourth edition, right? Yes, yeah, the fourth edition. Perfect. Perfect. 
great, great. So how have you, since this is your fourth edition of writing the CompTIA Linux Plus book, how has it evolved from the first book you wrote until now? Oh, every edition is radically different. Mm -hmm. um, now, mind you, the structure, uh, uh, when you write a book for Linux or Unix, um, you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that every micro topic is in the right order so that it flows progressively because otherwise Linux could seem very, very difficult if you come across something you've never heard of before that you need to know in order to understand something. So um, what I've done is I've made a structure from the in the first edition that I've kind of kept the same throughout the entire evolution of the book, but the content around that structure has changed drastically because Linux has evolved drastically in the last 15 years. Um, I mean, my last edition has... Uh, things like uh, dual distributions and and uh, ZFS and more server services than we uh, covered in the first edition and talks about newer technologies like System D, which is really going to replace the old System 5 mm -hmm. in it, in, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely evolved, but the structure is really the same. Great, great. So how do you stay uh, above the, the curve of you know, like you just mentioned, uh, system D, system, system MD, I believe you said, is replacing system five. Yeah. So yep. how do you stay above the curve to, to know what's new coming out with the CompTIA Linux Plus exams? Oh, well, it's pretty easy. Um, I don't, uh, I don't really stay above the curve when it comes to the certification exam. I just stay current with Linux. Mm -hmm. So uh, one, I run a lot of Linux servers, and two, a lot of them are run in production. For example, one of our uh, our main web servers that we use to host our student content for our programming uh, programs um, are all running Fedora 23 uh, mm -hmm. in the cloud and in our data center, and I'm the, the only administrator of those machines. Um, so, of course, when something new comes out, I'm going to see it, I'm going to research it, I'm going to put it on my servers, and then CompTIA will follow um, by introducing a new revision of their cert exam that covers the new technologies. All I have to do is look at the objective list and say, ah, I see, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> cool, cool, <laughs> great. So some people view CompTIA Linux Plus exam as kind of a Linux beginner exam, and they may think it, they view it as it doesn't hold as much weight as other Linux certifications. Um, on the market, but kind of what is your view on the CompTIA Linux Plus, ex Plus exam compared to, say, other exams like Red Hat or the Linux Professional Institute? Okay, well, well, firstly, CompTIA Linux Plus is a beginner certification exam mm -hmm. for Linux administrators, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's probably the most desirable first Linux certification to get, and for many people, the only one they're ever going to need. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a couple reasons. There's a couple reasons for that. Um, firstly, it's CompTIA. CompTIA has huge brand recognition in organizations today. They actually go out and advertise within organizations. So HR departments know that if a certification ends with the plus symbol, it's good, right? Um, yep. So, <laughs> so and since certification's primary use is a skills benchmark for hiring, if you pass Linux Plus, you get the advantage of that brand recognition when applying for a job. Uh, that's the first main reason. The second one is the, the Linux Plus certification is essentially the exact same two exams as LPI Level 1. That's why it's called CompTIA powered by LPI. Mm -hmm. And LPI Level 1 covers a pretty solid set of content that that you need to know to do any Linux administration in any organization that isn't specific to any single Linux distribution. So, um, if you get a job as a Linux administrator, you can always go on to like level two or three, which is very high level and very specific to certain things after completing Linux Plus. Mm -hmm. um, mainly to get those internal, you know, promotions or bonuses or to even maybe, you know, move on to another organization that needs someone with a, a larger Linux skill set, right? You never know. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, let's segue back to the um, CompTIA Linux Plus exam. Are there any uh, Linux commands you believe someone should focus on knowing in order to pass the exam? Yes. Uh, if it's one 
command is man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are hundreds and hundreds of Linux commands, files, uh, and procedures that are going to be on that cert exam. But And you have to know hundreds. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no substitute for practice. You actually have to run the commands. And when you run a command, like say, for example, grep, mm -hmm. just for stuff within a file, you're never going to forget what grep does or how to use it. And if you do, if you look at the manual page on the command using the man command, so uh, man grep, you'll see how to use grep. You'll learn all the common options like uh, grep dash I if you want to make it case insensitive or grep dash V if you want to reverse what grep is doing, right? Yes. Um, you know, so that's there's no substitute for that. So there's there you have to you know go through a bunch of different commands, and if there's one command that you really have to know is man, don't be afraid to <laughs> look up the help file for every single command that's on the objective list and uh, have fun executing it, and then you'll you'll pop those questions off on the certification exam, no problem. This is true. Everyone, please listen to him when he said, please know the man command, because it has helped me pass my CompTIA Linux Plus exam. So, yeah, everything that you're saying, it, it is, it's truth, actually, very much so. Um, since the CompTIA exam is two exams, what would you say would be a good strategy for someone to focus on taking an exam? Should they take um, the first exam, which I believe right now is 103, or should they take 104 first, or does it not matter? What's your take matter. on that? Doesn't matter. Uh, I wouldn't. Some some people say uh, you should do them the same day. I say, well, that's great if you want to do twice as much studying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd write them separately. I'd write um, either one or 103 or 104 first. Then you study for half of the material that's on on this certification exam and then you write that half and pass it and then you go on to the next, you focus your uh, study on the next half. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. So how difficult would you say it is to pass the Linux Plus exam? Well, <laughs> now <laughs> that's that's a good question. <laughs> um, the reason that's a good question is because I usually see uh, one of two types of people. Mm -hmm. um, who write that certification exam. There's there's those who skim through a bit of material and go in and write and fail it and come out thinking it was very, very tough or impossible. Um, because you can pass other certifications from other vendors like that, you know. Linux, you actually have to know what you're talking about to pass it. So those who look through the exam objectives and then overstudy everything, practice everything on a Linux virtual machine at home, maybe running on Windows or Macintosh, uh, or even, you know, natively installed, um, pass with flying colors be and think it's easy because they've spent that time going through everything that's on the cert, cert exam, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. It was just that they pre properly prepared for it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So well, Linux isn't hard. It's it, You just do have to know all the topics listed on the cert objectives in order to pass it. And they could ask you uh, anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, this is so, true. Yeah, so, so you do have to you have to study probably twice as hard for a Linux certification than any other certification, and that's regardless of Linux Plus or, or Red Hat or LPI. This is true because once once I completed the the Linux Plus exam, I just felt so exhausted, but I was happy I passed both, so it worked that's out. Yeah. yeah. So you you did mention um, having a virtual machine. So would you say what 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 software do you think someone should practice with uh, to help them gain that experience before they take the exam? Which Linux okay. software? So, so that's a that's a great question. That's a very important question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, when you're learning Linux, Linux can seem hard. So, we I wouldn't expect someone to give up their main desktop, whether it's Windows or Macintosh. But you can run uh, another operating system in there simultaneously, no problem, if you have enough RAM. And most most computers today come with eight gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's enough to run, you know, a virtual machine in Linux with a full GUI nice and fast using something like uh, if you've got Windows 8 or, or higher Hyper-V or you can use Oracle VirtualBox on Macintosh or Windows. It's, it's actually much faster than Hyper-V. Um, but uh, the Linux that you should use isn't just one distribution. You have to use at least two. And the reason for that is Linux Plus is not vendor specific. Yes. 
So they will test you on the Red Hat Package Manager. They'll also test you on the Debian Package Manager, which are the two major package managers used on Linux systems today. Uh, so you have to have a Red Hat-based distribution and a, and a Debian-based distribution. Uh, they'll also test you on the new System D, System Initialization System, as well as the, the traditional uh, system 5 system initialization system. So you have to have a uh, more newer as well as a slightly older Linux distribution as well. So I tell people, um, go get, say, the latest edition of Fedora, the, the latest distribution of Fedora, which is 23, um, and install that. And that comes with the Red Hat Package Manager and System D. And then maybe get Ubuntu 14 long-term support, which has the Debian Package Manager and comes with System 5. And then... When you get a question on anything related to Red Hat, Debian, package managers, or System D or System 5, you can load up the right virtual machine and try out those commands and understand and uh, commit to memory all the stuff you need for the cert exam. Yes, and don't forget to use the man command also. Yep. <laughs> uh, very important. Yeah. Google Great. help. You can Google man pages, right? So. This is true, too. Google is like your one-stop shop and also. <laughs> Are there any uh, Linux forms or blogs that you recommend uh, someone looking to obtain their Linux Plus uh, certification oh, to check out? There aren't any certification-specific blogs that I know of off the top of my head. There, there may be. I just don't know of them. Mm -hmm. But I follow uh, over two dozen Linux blogs. There are many Linux blogs out there. And, and the great thing about it is they'll... You'll, you'll keep current and bleeding edge. So even for things that are not on the certification exam, like Docker or ZFS, uh, always explore them. Have fun. Don't just, don't just study for the cert exam. Study Linux, right? Have fun with Linux. Because the certification exam will get you the job interview, and what will get you the job is if you're, you can sit in a seat with a, an IT manager and say, hey, I, this is what I like to use Linux for, and this is... This is uh, what Linux uh, is good at doing, right? Yes. And those, yes, this person is uh, perfect for our team, right? Um, so yeah, like uh, there's there's probably a lot of them out there. I actually list a couple dozen of them in my book, mm -hmm. but they're generic Linux, you know, blogs, and, and there's many of them on there. And I always get, I always add a new one every month. So I'm probably up to about 50 now, yeah. and uh, in my RSS uh, reader, and there's some great stuff that comes out every single month. Great. So what was the last blog that you added to your RSS reader, if you don't mind? It's a... I'd have to look that one up. Okay. I mean, we have time. <laughs> we have... Okay. If you don't um, mind. <laughs> I don't mind at all, actually. I'm just going to have to remote into a machine. Okay. Okay. So I've got quite a few of them up here. Okay. Um, there's there's a lot of them that I like, like fullcirclemagazine.org. Mm -hmm. Um lxcr.com of course there's how to forge that's a great website okay. um, linux voice linux journal unix men pharonix was the last one i added <laughs> <laughs> so p h o r o n i x.com um, uh, kernelnewbies.org oh it's, it's a great one linuxquestions.org uh, technix t k n i x x.com is a great one okay explainshell.com is amazing if you want to uh, put in any Linux command it will actually break it down and explain what it's doing for you explainshell.com um, ss64.com slash bash it's a bash reference it's phenomenal uh, a more advanced one that I like a lot is uh, commandlinefu.com fu.com it's, uh, it's some of the kung fu you can do in Linux such as redirecting files through SSH mm -hmm. um Tech Mint, Linux.com, Linux Survival, Linux AppFinder.com, SourceForge, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels like uh, uh, Sysadmin Girl, uh, QuidSup, Celebrate Ubuntu, The Urban Penguin, Charles uh, McComb, who's actually a friend of mine, Nixie Pixel, that's a good one. The Spots channel, you know, <laughs> and a lot of Twitter handles to follow as well. Okay. So, of course, always if, always follow, like, the distributions that you're using, like, add Ubuntu forums if you use Ubuntu, at Fedora, add, add Ubuntu, add Ask Ubuntu, at Linux questions, Linux underscore pro, at Linux voice, at, Lin at Full Circle Mag. Full Circle Mag's really good. Great. Oh, great for data mining, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for that list. That that was wonderful. How Are has mm-hmm. <laughs> <There's more. laughs> I believe you? <laughs> yeah, it's okay, you go on for hours. Yeah, but it's good, good, good stuff. So that's a great thing. So, how has being an author and a certified Linux professional impacted your life? Oh, well, I get a lot of email from people who've read my books, and I enjoy that. There's there's the odd, odd weird one, but. Uh, like you get the odd person who might email you and say, I'm trying to connect Linux to my toaster. <laughs> that, that's always fun. Uh, I reply to those, and uh, I kind of give it a good stab. But uh, putting putting even the most minor of topics in, in that logical or progressive order I talked about earlier mm-hmm. so that people can learn Linux without thinking it's hard, that, that actually was the best part of writing the book, and it forces you to grow your organizational skills. So that's probably... How what's impacted my life the most is writing allows you to be better organized at other things, uh, and that transfers to every other part of your life. So it's made me a better teacher, better dean, you know, better friend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Well, are there any final takeaways that you would like to give someone who's looking to be come CompTIA Linux Plus certified and who may be a little scared or afraid? What would you tell that person? Spend some quality time with Linux. So mm-hmm. Linux is one of those things where you can you can treat it like a program you have to study and then drop afterwards. Don't treat it like that. Linux is actually, uh, if you realize that Linux really runs the world when you do your online banking, you're talking to Unix and Linux machines. When you go to big websites, Amazon, Google, whatever, Facebook, it's all Linux. Like We don't see it, but we're starting to see it. So if you realize, hey, you know what, there's something worth doing here, then you're likely going to keep Linux in your computer in a virtual machine forever so my advice is don't study Linux just for certification study Linux because Linux is cool Uh, keep it on after you're done the search use it every day spend some quality time with Linux you'll be shocked at what what it can do even after the introduction to Linux certification Linux plus right yes Um, use it as a media center at home Uh you know uh, make your own web servers. Apache and Nginx are way faster than IIS, that's for darn sure. And you can do a lot of stuff. Get a free SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. Uh, to do that on Windows would be like nailing Jello to a tree. To do it on Linux is two commands. Yeah. Right? So, so there's, there's lots of stuff you can do with Linux. Open your mind to that world of Linux and in the process get certified because that's a, that's a job benchmark, right? And employers want to see that. They want to see that you that you're getting Linux certified. Uh, it's even more important now because Microsoft, uh, if you've uh, seen uh-huh. Linux Con North America, which was not too far from me in Toronto, and I was there. Right. Um, <laughs> that uh, I mean, they had Microsoft up there, the CEO of Microsoft, with a slide that said Microsoft loves Linux. Loves Linux yeah. Yes, and uh, the, you know, there's there's a Ubuntu and Canonical system in uh, Windows 10 now, and, and uh, Microsoft is tooting, running a lot of services, their services on Linux, which makes sense, probably because they won't have to maintain their own operating system over time, right? If they if they run Microsoft SQL Server on Linux, which it does right now, mm-hmm. you know, or .NET or Active Directory, right? So. Yes, great. People need to understand that this Linux is a whole other world that's taking over the world. And I think you expressed that very clearly. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Oh, one last thing I should mention. For those who don't know, who have a Macintosh, uh, one of the coolest things I've ever experienced is when you get a bunch of students in class, I always, the first day of our class, I say, okay, who here has a Macintosh at home? And you get maybe a third of the class put up their hand, maybe, maybe more, right? Um, and I, I tell them, okay, just go to applications and terminal. And everything we do in this class, you can do on your Macintosh because it's Unix. <laughs> it blows their mind. <laughs> All the same commands, including man. Yes. <laughs> it's a great thing. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jason. It's been a pleasure to have you here at the Linux Certification Virtue Summit to discuss CompTIA Linux Plus. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome.